is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Spoil Me, covering Veronica Mars, Season 2, Episode 17, Plan B. In this episode, so Thumper gets got, and he gets got in a very creative way that I personally rather liked. But also, what the fuck is going on with Beaver? Dude, what's that? Welcome to Spoil Me. Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Natasha. A huge thank you to Jackie for commissioning this episode. What's up, Jackie? Um, Anyas and Megan are here in the chat. Hello to both of you delightful people. So this episode, there's a lot of stuff that starts to like get sort of, I don't even want to say resolved because that's too final a word, but it starts to kind of come to a head, if that makes sense, which I suppose follows because there's like what 22 episodes per season so if this is 17 we've only got five more left they're gonna have to start really like kind of getting down to business at this point um so what this episode mainly deals with is the framing of logan and what exactly went on with felix and molly And the fact that Thumper is almost definitely guilty of the murder of Felix. I really enjoyed uh, like the direction that they took with how all of this gets revealed and explained. Um, And, you know, honestly, any episode that has like so much Weevil in it is just going to be a winner for me. I love Weevil so much. And... I should look him up and see what he's been in lately because he is so pretty that I keep wondering like how he aged, if he aged well, because some guys when they're real, real pretty and they start to get older, they look even better. Or sometimes they have this weird thing where their face seems to just swell up and it's not even like them gaining weight. It's just that they start to look like weirdly puffy, like the baby face did not work out for them later in life. I'm very curious what he looks like now. Um, but there's also a subplot going on with Mayor Woody. Is that right? Guys, I hate that name. Owen's last name is Woody and it's just so terrible. I'm so thankful that he told me if we got married, like first thing when we were dating is like, if we get married, you don't have to take my name. I was like, oh, cause I can't. Um, I, oh no, Megan says he's definitely puffy faced. <laughs> That's so funny. I I just like that happens. Um, Woody Goodman. That's it. Mayor Goodman. Mayor, right? Um, Okay. So his first name is Woody. It's not Mayor Woody. That's better. Um, And I just, this mayor, there's something up with this guy. And I don't know what it is. It could be any number of things, but I'm going to talk about what's happening there first. So last episode, there was this whole essay contest and the prize for winning the contest was that you got to push the plunger uh, for the demolition of this huge stadium. And honestly, that is pretty dope. This episode, we start out with... Logan winning the essay contest and Veronica, who has a hard time believing that Logan did anything properly, goes and checks on his essay that's pinned up to the board. And it's uh, apparently a bunch of like starts off with a bunch of lines from Easy Rider. Um, I imagine that the whole thing doesn't have to like because she's sort of acting like the fact that you stole these lines means that this isn't your work. It sounds like he just took a couple of lines and then wrote a whole essay around that. I would like it, of course, if he credited them 
Uh, and you could start out an essay with like a quote from something and then expand on that in your actual essay. If you did it that way, it'd be fine. But I am really curious how much you can really rely on a movie quote for an entire essay's worth of content. Um, but yeah, he just seems so amused at the fact that she is on to him and knows precisely fucking what he is up to. And I just, all episode, all I kept thinking was that we have kind of fallen into this habit of thinking that Logan is like a good guy. And maybe he is in a lot of ways, but we got a lot of reminders here that he isn't really, uh, he's certainly not altruistic. Let's say that. I feel like altruistic and being a good person are not always things that go together. But I feel like we tend to think of, of, the way that Logan works as being like, I'm going to put on a show of how selfish and like spoiled I am and how much I only give a shit about myself. But in the end, I tend to do the right thing. And I'm not sure that I can like buy that anymore when it seems like every time he winds up doing the right thing is because somebody backs him into a corner and like kind of makes him a little bit. Sure. It's still his choice to do the right thing. And he could just ignore that person pressuring him. But there comes a point where it's like the fact that this is doesn't feel like it's your like decision uh, from the beginning makes me sort of side eye you a little bit. And this episode really brings that to the fore that Logan's a questionable dude, you know, like and we've been knowing, but it's definitely something that I feel is coming more and more becoming more and more clear and that they're less and less afraid of of. Because I, I feel like there have been times when maybe they have regretted setting him up as being like a little bit less relatable or good because they're pairing him with Veronica romantically and they don't really want to do that. And then there are times where I like at the end of this episode, it feels a little bit like they're trying to set him and Veronica back up again. And I cannot tell you how I feel about that because I'm not sure. I have moments of just being like, I don't want her with this dude because his friends are creeps and the company that you keep reflects who you are. And then I remember that Veronica is very morally questionable at times as well. So maybe they're great for each other. It's just that the places that they're each willing to color outside the lines are different places. But in the end, it winds up like sort of working out and balancing. Um, oh, no, I just looked up Francis Capra, who is the guy who plays Weevil. And it he has gotten some unfortunate plastic surgery, y'all. What did he do? Oh, this is tragic. It looks like he got some sort of like cheek implants or something. It's not even like, yeah, no, there's something, there's something going on. He did something and his face is like a slightly different shape. Um, also, I think that he is like way less attractive with hair, I think is part of it. So he really should just get rid of that. But he looks like a different person now. Oh, no. What a shame. I'm so sad. Uh, Rachel says, I think it's just from weight gain. And part of it might be that he's put weight on. But I, it's the, it also might be that like, you know, as you get older, your your hair can thin. So his eyebrows and his goatee are all sort of like less uh, like dark. And therefore, the hair on his head is much darker than his facial hair and his eyebrows, which gives him a less dangerous look. It's funny how much of an impact that makes. But there's like a particular photo of him. He's pursing his lips all the time. I'm sharing this link. Um, I'm sharing this link. So we'll see if it pops up the correct thing for you guys. But there's a particular image that'll be highlighted there that like, oof. Um, so anyway, I'm sorry, I got distracted. Good God, though. 
Uh, all right, let's back up. Let's talk about the beginning of this episode because Weevil is walking around campus and he is seeing Thumper being in charge of the PCHers and kind of stops and gives him a look. And there's a bit of a flashback where he is talking about fe- talking to Felix and they're all talking about like what they're going to do in their futures and, and their plans. Um, and he is asking himself, why do I even stay in school? And then remembers that like, yeah, you know what? I promised my grandma also a hot girl walks by. Um, and Felix says something about how he wants to become a trucker because you make pretty good money, which is true. Um, my stepdad's a trucker and settle down and have a family. Now, not for nothing, but Felix is such a goober. Am I wrong? This dude looks like he walked straight out of West Side Story with that hair. Like he needs to calm down. And Felix makes a joke about how, or no, Weevil makes a joke about how Felix is acting like he's about to go and get married. But really, he doesn't even have a girlfriend. So maybe he's getting ahead of himself a little bit. And, you know, this is the moment where Felix gets this weird look on his face because he realizes that like his friends don't know about his girl and he can't tell them. And there's a, uh, a, just an interesting expression where he realizes that he isn't going to be able to share with them who he's talking about. And it's sort of sad. And, and Weevil looking back on this and realizing like that he was making fun of his friend for a thing that it turns out wasn't even true and that wound up kind of maybe being his undoing is fucked up. Um, so yeah, we'll get back to that. Um, cause this is all taking place during lunch hour at Neptune and we have this moment of the girl that Wallace is seeing, whose name I have already forgotten. Is it Jane? Um, she just comes up and kisses him on the cheek and his reaction is like enough for, uh, Veronica to like, look at the two of them and be like, huh, because she can see that he's not that into it. He doesn't seem particularly happy to see her. He doesn't really respond with a kiss the same way. He's just weird about it. And I kind of love that Veronica has this reaction and kind of side eyes them both. And you can also see that Wallace is aware that Veronica has noticed. So it's like a weird thing where he's like trying to be cool. And the girl whom it concerns isn't aware of the fact. But both him and Veronica realize that oh, we're going to have to have a talk about this, aren't we? Like, I just found that really funny. It's sort of um, it's one of those moments that like, if you have perceptive friends, it can be the most annoying thing where you're like, you know, I just really didn't want to talk about this yet. I kind of wanted to wait until I felt cool and like I wanted to bring it up. But you're so goddamn like observant. Now I have to have this conversation like early and I didn't want to do this. And I feel like that's probably what it's like just living with Veronica as your friend. Um. So Jane is talking about the band and how it's going to like some regional whatever. Um, And then and the Sadie Hawkins dance as well is a thing that's coming up. And uh, there is this moment where Wallace tells Veronica to, quote, work it, girlfriend. And I was just like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, Meanwhile... Jane is joking around about how she isn't sure who she's going to ask because there's this one guy who she likes, but then there's this dude who's in the band who's really cute and it's a kind of a sweet, like flirty moment. And it seems for a second, like everything is all cool between them. And then Weevil summons Veronica away. And I loved this scene so much. He is, you know, there, there's a moment where she's like, you're going to need to pay me for me to continue to listen to this. And he says, well, I'll just wait on your uh, curiosity to win out. And he just stands there, waits. She kind of starts to walk away and gives him a look. And he roll. she rolls her eyes and starts to walk away. He just sort of just stands there, waits. She starts to walk away again. 
She turns and looks at him. Finally, she just goes, all right. And I love that moment so much. There is nothing quite as annoying as somebody who completely has you pegged and fucking calls you out on shit like that. Like Owen does that with me all the time. He'll just be like, yeah, but you were going to say this. And I'll be like, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. I wasn't even going to say that. What do you mean? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Who who would even say that in in the first place? Anyway, like, God, that would be so pedantic if I was just, fine. Yes. No, it's wrong. It's incorrect. God. And he'll just sit there like cackling because he knows that I'm just like, I can't help it. I can't help it. Um. <laughs> so, yeah. He says, Thumper killed Felix. She says, okay, if you know Thumper did it, then what do you need me for? And he's like, yeah, I can't prove it, though. And Thumper has something on me, so I can't exactly, like, go after him the way that I normally would. So he tells her that the situation with that guy, Curly, wasn't what he said. That there wasn't just, like, a brief confrontation outside that he then, like, you know, walked away from. She says, shocker. And makes this hand signal with three fingers. And he has to be like, I think that's Scout's honor. Shocker is more like, and he tries to like fix her hand. Um, and your fingers are, and she's like, nope, not important. Moving on. Oh my God. Did you, do you guys remember hearing what the shocker was when you're in like high school? <sighs> so immature. I still see dudes with like the shocker hand on the back of their car, like a, as like a, what do you call it? A uh, bumper sticker? Like, who does that? Really? Are we serious? What are you, fucking 12? Um, so he says, we, we got a, an anonymous call. Some of my boys, as well as me, all saying the same thing. Curly sent the bus off a cliff to take out Servando for hustling Liam Fitzpatrick out of a few grand. And so we cut to... Uh, him beating the shit out of this dude and his and curly saying i didn't do this these kids i took i heard you took out the bus to get to servando meanwhile thumper is filming the whole thing on his phone this guy is saying it wasn't me i know who did it and just as he says i know who did it a car turns its headlights on and they all get on their bikes and run off as this car. Apparently, like, I'm assuming that this that they're all taking off thinking that this car has witnessed them beating the shit out of this guy, that whoever is in there is going to be like a hazard to them. But what I'm thinking is that one of the Fitzpatricks was in that car and they were keeping an eye on the situation, maybe hoping that they themselves were going to have something that they could use against uh, uh, Weevil at another point. Maybe they were filming this as well. And then they realized that this dude was about to like fucking snitch and they turned their lights on to, you know, signal that they were about, and like, maybe they just like ran him over or maybe they grabbed him up and like threw him over a cliff. I don't know. But I feel like it's got to be the Fitzpatricks that were there. Um, oh, Anya's is asking what the shocker is, guys. Uh, okay. I'm like, do I want to do this or do I want to make you internet search it just so that I don't have to talk about it? And then I was like, if you internet search this, the results are going to be terrible. So never mind. Yeah, Megan's saying Google it. I would recommend not Googling it. Um, the shocker is a thing that guys like think that is like a good uh like sex trick where two fingers go in the vagina and one finger goes in the asshole and i don't understand why anybody thinks that this is something that we would enjoy just like in and out just like that's no good but apparently a lot of dudes think that this is like really either works or at least is funny so yeah the shocker, it's called, because, oh, a, a woman doesn't expect you to put your finger up her ass. Isn't it funny to have unconsensual, unconsensual sexual penetration? It's hilarious. Um, anyway, so he he doesn't believe that Curly saved the, the that Curly sent the bus off the cliff. Um, and he's when we have the like 
the flashback ends there. Um, and he's, she's like, will you beat him up in any way? And he says, no, I saved his life. My boys wanted to send him off a cliff behind the road hog. Um, and she asks if Curly had her name written on his hand while he was beating the shit out of him. Like, did you notice that that was happening, that that had happened already? But he says, but no, the, the cameo that he was wearing, though, did look a lot like you. <sighs> Weevil. You stop it. You're asking for our help. Be nice. Um, so, yeah, he says Thumper's going to go down one of two ways. Either the law is going to handle it or I will. And that is precisely how this episode kind of goes down is Veronica wants the, the law to take care of it. And Weevil is willing to go along with that because it'll probably be like the safest route since he's gotten her involved. But once it becomes clear that the law is not interested, he handles that shit himself. Um, <laughs> Anya says, thank you for not making me Google it. You know what? Anytime that I can save somebody from a traumatic internet search. I wish somebody had saved me from the traumatic internet search of looking up Francis Capra <laughs> with his spray tan. Um <laughs> Bless him. Okay, so we have this moment between Jackie and Wallace. Now, you know, you all know how I feel about Jackie. I feel a, like slightly warmer towards her since she held her head high and got on that damn uh, dunking booth bench. That was like a pretty boss moment of hers to just be like, no, fuck them. I'm going to do this. I don't get wet and whatever. It doesn't matter. It's fine. But I still don't really like her as a person. Um, and it's a weird thing where she's like, there's there's a lot of talk um, throughout this episode of people who like think of her as a man eater type um, and her trying to get away from that like that image. And on the one hand, I respect trying to like change your reputation, especially when you are in high school and changing your reputation is next to impossible. But I also felt like I don't see a good motivation for Jackie changing the way that she's behaving. Like, her being a partier who went out with like a variety of different dudes, um, some of them much older than her. All of that was stuff that it feels like they're trying to be like, well, once her father was accused of a crime, she decided to clean her act up. Why? That like, I don't really understand where this desire to turn over a new leaf is really coming from. And it's it's something that I feel like the show realized that they made her a little too aggressively like unpleasant right out of the gate and that they're trying to they they are like, oh, you know what, but she's an interesting character and maybe we should like give her a little bit more to do or re have her redeem herself. And I'm not really sure why I should be rooting for this or why she wants to do this. If it's about her father being accused of a crime and her wanting to like turn over a new leaf because she feels like it would be good for his reputation if she had a better reputation. I could understand that in general, but I also don't really believe it. Like in terms of it making a difference, what she's done in her past is all, is still there. Um, not that she's done anything particularly horrible. She just like she was out here dating dudes who were much older than her and, uh, you know, racking up credit card debt and whatever. She was just kind of a reckless person. And I don't really understand what th this whole episode feels like is supposed to be like everybody misjudges her. And I'm like, they don't though. Like she made it very clear who she was, the way that everybody judges her is something that she established. She pur purposely, got like put it out there 
that she was a certain type of person, I thought, because she wanted people to see her that way. And now she's trying to take it back. And I'm supposed to be like, oh, everybody misjudges her. And I'm like, I don't really have a lot of sympathy for it, you know? So, like, she seems slightly cooler when she's talking to Wallace in these episodes, in this episode, and the scenes that she's in here. Like, she's not as awful as she was before. But I am not somebody who is willing to, like, overlook somebody's previous behavior just because right now they're acting differently. And, like, the the tricks that she pulled, uh, trying to, like, first of all, embarrass Veronica on TV, but also trying to frame her friend for theft, which is what she was doing when she hired Veronica and told her that I think my friend stole my credit cards. Like, that's really shitty. That's really, really shitty. And I don't get what is supposed to have changed at all other than her father being falsely accused of a crime that can happen to your father. And that does not make you a better person. So I'm just kind of like in the weeds here in terms of, of how I feel about the two of them, because obviously he likes her much better than he liked Jane. Like it's very clear that him and Jane don't have the same kind of chemistry, even as actors. It's fine. But I, I'm not the the whole theme of this episode that underlied what was going on between him and Jane and him and Jackie was supposed to be kind of like, isn't it unfortunate that this girl got labeled this way? And it just seemed like that's what she wanted, though. And now she's trying to turn that around. And sure, he's not really understanding the impact that he's having because of the choices he's making. But she made her bed and she has to lie in that. You know, like she was apparently fine with everybody thinking that she was a huge bitch until they came for her dad. And then that was like a bridge too far. Um, but what it comes down to pretty much is that like initial the, the whole initiation of the kiss, because uh, Jane brings Wallace to the Sadie Hawkins dance. He asks her to go get drinks and then fucking follows Jackie out to the parking lot kisses her jane sees or at least her friend sees and tells jane and jane assumes that jackie initiated the kiss and is trying to take her boyfriend away and wallace is actually the one who initiated it which you know credit to wallace he confesses that to jane later on and it's like look you're blaming her she did not kiss me i kissed her and i just still have feelings for her and i really am sorry um, and when he breaks up with her and goes and tells Jackie, Hey, I'm free now. I'm not with anybody. You and I can be together. Jackie's like, dude, what are you fucking high? Like whether or not you dumped her before we started going out again, that's not going to matter to anybody. Everybody is going to see me as this woman who like stole you away from her and got you to break up with her. And she's like one of the nicest girls in the school and nobody likes me to begin with. And there's no way that anybody is going to be on my side or like not see me as the villain here. So no, I am absolutely not going to get back together with you. And I'm really interested to see how long this lasts because you know, it feels like inevitable that they are eventually going to end up together. But I don't know what leads to that or what happens in the meantime, because it, it seems like you kind of just have to wait for all of this to blow over. And it all depends on how Jane takes it, whether or not it will blow over. You know, Jane doesn't strike me as a particularly uh, vengeful person you know she doesn't seem like a vindictive girl and like she's gonna come out here and try and make anybody's lives miserable uh it seems like she believed wallace when he was like listen i was the one who kissed her it was not the other way around so i'm hoping that she doesn't take this out on jackie and that she realizes that it's really wallace's issue but you know when people get broken up with they can do crazy things Otherwise, reasonable, sane people with usually pretty good mental processes suddenly start to just do shit or assume shit that makes no sense. So we'll see. Um, 
But yeah, so all this to say that I don't really care about having Jackie back on the show too much. And I feel like they keep trying to make Jackie happen. And I guess I don't I just don't really like know what they're doing. Um, But whatever, it's fine. She's more interested in interesting than Jane anyway. So, okay. Now I want to talk real quick about Beaver and Mac. Weird moment where they are walking in the hallway and he seems to really want her to ask him to the Sadie Hawkins dance. But when they are talking about it, because she asks him and he says yes, and he says, and if the dance blows half as much as I'm guessing it will, we can cut out early and go straight for the good stuff. And she says, oh, my, and kind of fans herself like she like clearly she thinks that he's talking about going and making out. And he says, I'm talking about Neptune's best pizza quest. 06. you get your mind out of the gutter. And he walks away from her and she gets this like sort of smile. But then when he's out of uh, when he, he's out of view, she sort of looks wistful and she goes and talks to Veronica a little bit later. And it's just like, Hey, is it weird that he doesn't seem to want to like even make out that much? Cause she says that we've made out a couple times, but when Veronica says with tongue, she's like sometimes, which I'm like, if you're not even doing tongue every time, I'm not sure you can call that making out. Like, that's kind of a prerequisite. You need to be hot and heavy. And any they've been, you know, dating for a while. And she seems to be like expecting that they would be at least doing, as she puts it, some over the clothes stuff. And they haven't yet. And she doesn't really know what the problem is, like, because she clearly wants to. And he is just not interested and puts her off every time and just generally seems to be like a prude doesn't even seem to be the right word because a prude is somebody who is like usually is just like I am not comfortable yet. But when she talks to him about it, it doesn't even feel like he has a kind of all right. Here's my here's my theory here. Is he just pretending to be into her so that she will work on all of this stuff for him, like the letterheads and the website and all of that, when actually he's either, maybe he's like messing with uh, Ken Kennedy, Kendall, what's the name of uh, Charisma Carpenter's? Kendall. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, maybe he's like actually involved with her. I don't get the feeling that he is, though, from the way that he talked to her on the elevator that time. Um, or maybe he's gay and she's like a beard. Uh, but if that's true, her asking him to the Sadie Hawkins dance, I don't feel like he'd necessarily like harp on it so much the way that he did. But maybe he would if he was just trying to like keep up appearances that he has a girlfriend to avoid being like teased or whatever. Um, I just don't I don't really know. And and it could just be that he's not ready. But there is something about the subtext of, of how he behaves when she asks him that doesn't feel that simple, because if you're just not ready. That's what you say, you you say look, I'm just not there yet. I'm nervous about all of this. Please just be patient. And we might get there, we might not. And if we don't, I need you to be okay with that too. And if you're not, then I need you to like, you know, tell me now because I don't want to constantly be dealing with pressure. But he doesn't do that. When she asks him if he's nervous, he says no. And she says something about, uh, Maybe if you don't have that much experience or if I, he gets really defensive about it in this way that seems like, oh, you think I don't want to do this because I don't know what I'm doing when in fact it's this whole other thing and I definitely know what I'm doing, but you just aren't aware. And there's, there's something about the whole like 
the way that he reacts to some things that she says versus other things makes it feel like a really specific thing is going on here to me. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Rachel says that would be a mature thing to say. I'm not sure most teenagers are quite that mature, mature though. I mean, sure. But like, he doesn't have to say it that way. It's just that he doesn't engage on that part of what she's saying at all, which means like to me that that's not a factor to him. Um, Huggabug says, but his older brother is Dick. Um, I mean, I don't know what that means here. Like, is it supposed to be that his older brother is Dick in that that means that he's extra unmature or, um, yeah, it doesn't help that we've seen Dick harass him about being a virgin. Oh, look at his role models. Yeah. I don't like, I, I just really don't know because it feels like he's sort of gone out of his way as he's gotten older to be as unlike Dick as he can. Like part of his deal is that he doesn't want to be like him. So is that what it is? Is that part of it? Is that she wants to like fool around and he doesn't want to be like his brother and Dick would definitely just be trying to like get in her pants and he feels like he doesn't want to be that kind of guy. Um, it could be she said something to him that Dick has said and it pushed a button. Maybe. Cause yeah, like, she asks if I'm doing like, am I doing something wrong? And he gets up and he says, you weren't doing anything wrong, but you are now. Which like, she's straight up just asking you. Like, she isn't in the moment trying to pressure you to like, take your clothes off when you guys are alone together or anything. She is trying to find out what you're thinking. And you are just behaving as if she's like, either being really rude, which she's not, or being really, really aggressive. And she's not doing that either. So, you know, obviously, like I said, people can be irrational. And, and maybe he will look back at this moment and be like, she wasn't doing any of that. I don't know why I said that. But it feels like there's something really particular happening here that he's hiding something from her. And I don't know what that looks like, you know. Um, I don't know. So... We'll see. Um, but yeah, so he winds up just walking away from her and she's sitting there like looking nonplussed. And I really wonder what's going to happen because if it were that he is just using her in order to like get these um, websites and letterhead and everything made for whatever the fake businesses that he's running, then one would think her pressuring him in this moment he would not have just blown up and basically like dumped her because he'd still need her. So I feel like that's not it, but I don't know. Um, but this, this subplot is just like, it's made me very, very curious. I'm extremely interested. Um, okay. So, or maybe he was abused. And so he's just really like tight in terms of, of, because that can happen. If somebody was like sexually abused, becoming like having consensual sexual contact with somebody can be really loaded. Um, and I would hate to think that that's what's going on with him, but like, it could be, have we met their parents? Um, I don't remember. I'm, we must have because there've been like, right. A party or something at Dick's. I don't remember what their parents are like though. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah. The, we did meet their dad because he's a fucking, what do you call it? Um, he was the swindler. Y maternidad, says Megan. Megan, what you talking about? Um, I'm not sure we met his mom, but his dad is a big business guy, right? Yeah, I don't think we met his mom, though. I think their mom left, right? So that's like the whole thing is that their mom never comes around. And that's why Kendall is there. Um Megan says we met their dad stupid autocorrect bilingual that's so funny um, saw his mom once or she's at least been mentioned and then Kendall is their stepmom yeah because I think I remember their mom's like leaving them out of her will or something there was something weird about like the money and her not wanting to give them what they thought they deserved to get um, but anyway we'll see what happens with that let's jump to what's going on with um with Logan and the county courthouse and being honorary deputy mayor. 
um, Veronica is coming to him and she's asking him for information about what the hell happened with Thumper. Um, now, he doesn't know that Thumper is the one that killed Felix, but she's like, I know that you saw the person who, uh, you know, like witnessed whatever it was that went down and you told them that you couldn't identify them, but you could. And he says, I like, I'm cleared of all charges. So really at this point, I don't give a fuck about that case anymore. I don't, I don't want to get involved. I don't really give a shit. And she says, He's Thumper's about to get away with killing Felix, framing you, taking over the PCH bike club and cornering the high school drug trade. We could invite him to speak at the FPLA. Um, and he says, it's not my problem. And she takes his car keys. You don't remember anything about the guy who stopped and helped you, the 911 caller. And he says, Mexican dude driving a truck. His truck had a bumper sticker. How's my driving? 1-800-EAT something and then he tells her that it's like a uh a fishmongering truck i think is what he says like there was a sea san diego seafood is what it was um probably know him if i saw him so he goes to the mayors and this mayor is like a little bit in the red in terms of uh the goodwill of the people. And so he wants at first for his secretary to call for a photo op with the kid who's going to be deputy mayor. But when he realizes that it was fucking Logan, he's like, cancel that. Like, that's the last thing that he needs is for everybody to realize that somebody who was accused of murder and who was a spoiled rich boy is the person that he chose. It's not going to look great. Right. So this weird relationship begins where he like gives him a bunch of busy work and the mayor is expecting uh for veronica's dad to show up and talk to him about the information that he's trying to uncover about you know what went on with uh jackie's dad and it is a weird i don't know what to think of this he is telling Keith, I need you to drop everything and focus 100% on what's going on with Terrence. And he says also that, let's see, do, 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 you know something? I know the quality of his character. Right, right. He's talking about Terrence here and that he doesn't need to worry about this. Um, and Logan says, there's something you gentlemen should probably see. This DVD was in the stack of mail. No return address. And it is the inside of the mayor's house. And it slowly tracks across all of these like family portraits and all of this stuff. And then we see a pic, uh, the camera zero in on lo looks to be him and his daughter at dinner. And of course he is assuming at this point that this is being sent to him as a threat because somebody disagrees with his proposal to incorporate Neptune. And it becomes clear later on as Keith was like looking th through the footage a little bit more closely that there is a clock on the wall that says that it's cer a certain time, but it's dark outside, very obviously. And so that means that this had to be done much later in the year when the light, you know, when there's daylight savings. And for some reason, this causes him, and by him I mean the mayor, to come up with this bullshit story about how they fired a gardener because he killed the gladiolas. His wife fired the gardener. And probably this guy did this in retaliation. And he just wants to get the DVD back from Keith. Keith, for his part, saved a copy of this video on his computer and is looking through it on his own a little bit later on, which leads me to believe Keith knows something is up. 
And there's a scene between the mayor and Logan that's ringing all kinds of alarm bells for me. It is something strange. Um, he is weightlifting and uh, the mayor had invited him into the gym and was like, clearly you need, you, I know what you need and starts working out. And the mayor says like, looking at you, uh, Logan reminds me of the good old days back when I was young and ripped. And then he sort of like squeezes his arm in this certain way and says something like, I bet you have a lot of fun with the ladies. And it's a weird moment because it could be taken a couple ways. It could be taken as a come on and him being like, you know, maybe he's gay or bi and like coming on to Logan and it's, Despite the power imbalance and despite the fact that Logan is a literal high schooler, it's much like less sinister or it could be that he is into younger dudes and that he has gone younger than Logan before. Uh, so it's a weird moment of like they almost seem to be kind of like getting along during that scene of uh, the weightlifting scene for a second. And once he does that, you can see that Logan is a little bit like weirded out by the whole thing. And, and uh, I don't know the, the squeezing of the arm, it, it, it could be taken as extremely nothing. And, and this is the thing about people who like, know exactly where the line is, is that they know that they can do things that you make you uncomfortable, but you, you don't really feel like you can say anything to. And when he says, I bet you have fun with the ladies, Logan says the ones that survive. And he like sort of laughs and walks away. And I'm like, are you, are you like, or could he be trying to like, get Logan involved with his daughter because she just chats to Logan nonstop at the, at the dance. But like, what does he want from Logan? Just his money? Is that it? And, and because I feel like his daughter dating an accused murderer, of course, also is not going to look great. So I don't know. Um, uh, anyway. Oh, oh. Anya says Beaver wanted to move in with his mom and her new family, but she was iffy about it, I re if I recall. That's the one. That's what it was. This is, she was kind of like rejecting them. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, such a strange scene. And clearly he's trying to hide something that's on that video. And I have no idea what that's about. Like, because if it's on that video... There's Keith has clearly watched the whole thing already. So it has to be something that's very subtle. Like it has to be something that I don't know if it was going on in the background or if there's like something in the room. I don't know. But if it's something obvious, like, you know, if he was like, let's say he was sexually abusing somebody. Keith would not have missed that by now. I'm sure Keith didn't just watch half the video you know, after the course of like several days. So there has to be something on this that he wants back for a reason, but that isn't super clear on just one viewing. And I don't know what that looks like. So for his part, Weevil tries to play by Veronica's rules. And he manages to like get Thumper on tape talking about uh or no not thumper he manages to get um one of the fitzpatrick's like molly's older brother or uncle probably talking about how she shouldn't have been dating that cholo and that if her father were out of prison he would have done it himself so really pretty much just saying we killed him because you were fucking him and we cannot be having that. You are not going to be dating a Mexican. And 
they bring this to the cops. It's a really ugly scene too, the way that he talks to her. It's super gross. But of course, they bring this to Sheriff Lamb and he does not give any shits. Like as far as he's concerned, this case is closed. He doesn't want to deal with it anymore. And he sure doesn't want to take a lead from fucking Veronica, which like, honestly, I can't even get that mad at him for that. Because if I were him, I'd probably be annoyed with her also. But it's very clear at this point that that Weevil isn't going to get the satisfaction he's looking for going through legal methods. So what he does is he goes and uh, uses some chloroform on Thumper right before Thumper is about to make a drop of some money. And it's really smart, honestly, because he could have bashed him over the back of the head. He could have decked him. He could have done any number of things to try and knock him out. But he does something that does not leave a mark, specifically because he knows that the Fitzpatricks are going to notice that. And he takes the money. And instead of just being like, oh, I'm going to run off with all this money and make it look like you're incompetent and you got robbed, which could happen to anybody, he knocks out Thumper and then like hides the money somewhere that it looks like Thumper is going to be planning to go back and get it. So Thumper is in the middle of being questioned by the Fitzpatricks later on. And he tries to tell them, I don't know what happened to it. The money's gone, yada, yada, yada. And then they find it stashed someplace. So it really sounds like he's ripping them off and pretending that he got mugged. And it plans to just walk away with all their cash. And they grab Thumper up and they handcuff him to a urinal in the bathroom. Now, full disclosure, y'all, I didn't realize that he was in this building, right? How many of you put it together that he was in the stadium when they were chaining him up? Do they say, because like they were kind of taunting him, but I don't feel like they ever said anything specific about it. And I was just like, why are they leaving him here? Like, I was just so confused. For a second, I was like, maybe they are going to tell the PCHers that he was working for them. And they're like leaving him there for them to come and get him and do whatever they want to him so that it won't be on their hands, which would actually not be a terrible tactic, right? It'd be like, hey, your guy was working for us. Uh, but if you want to punish him, that's going to be your job because we're like removing ourselves from this situation. So I kind of thought maybe that. And then it turns out that he is in the stadium that is about to be demolished. Now, it seems kind of bonkers to me that they wouldn't have searched the whole stadium to make sure that there wasn't a person in there once they found a motorcycle. I'm not sure exactly where in the building he was, but like, it feels like if you're about to blow up a building of this size, you would be absolutely like obsessive about ensuring every nook and cranny of this space does not have a human being in it. But maybe if they know the right guy, they can just get him to not look in the one bathroom they don't want him to look in also. Oh, there it is. Rachel says, I think someone with the Fitzpatrick said he searched and no one was in there. Okay, there it is. So yeah. Um, so I don't know what kind of destruction this sort of demolition would do on a human body. But I imagine they're going to find Thumper, right? Like, this isn't like somebody being blown up and like body parts are everywhere and it's going to take forever. He's going to be crushed, but he's going to be crushed up against a floor. His whole body is going to be in one place. They're going to be able to tell who he was. So Veronica's going to have to figure out a little bit later what happened here. And as much as it's not Weevil that killed Thumper, he set him up to be killed. You know, Weevil's like aware enough of that that he goes to fucking confession 
because he killed a guy, essentially. That's exactly what he wanted to have happen. And I enjoy this a lot because I've been saying that we're supposed to be afraid of the PCHers, but as far as I could tell, they really weren't even that violent. Like, we didn't see them doing too much that was particularly shady until Thumper popped up and was, like, being really horrifying. Um, but finally getting to see Weevil do something like this, that makes him a little bit more frightening to me. Now, he didn't do it with his own two hands, which doesn't seem totally, like, the same kind of threatening to me, but that means that he also keeps his own hands clean. So that's smart. And that could make him scarier depending on the way that you look at it. Um, but yeah, I just like, Oh yeah. Okay. Rachel says it was a construction worker. We don't know if I recall, but I assumed he was in on it with how insistent he was that the building was empty. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, so, yeah, this this is just a really, like, uh, in some ways very satisfying because, you know, fuck Thumper for not only um, killing one of his own people because the Fitzpatricks told him to, I guess, but also framing somebody else for it and being one of the most vocal in terms of, like, trying to bring that guy down just he's trash so i'm totally fine with him being dead i'm not mad about it i'm just really curious to see what this does to the relationship between weevil and veronica when she realizes the tact tactics that he was willing to employ in order to handle this dude when he realized that the law wasn't going to do it and will she believe that he didn't lock thumper up himself like, will will she believe that he orchestrated it so that somebody else did it? And even if she does, will that matter to her? Or will that still just be like, yeah, well, it's it adds up to the same thing, you know, which I could understand. I'm not even disagreeing with that assessment. So I don't know. We'll see. But I really, really like this episode. And, and it was very dramatic, you know, the way that all of this went down. Um and I am extremely curious about the mayor and what it is that Keith knows, because like he clicks on that living room footage and we see it like traveling around um, another part of the house that we had not yet seen when we very first watched them being like at the table eating. So Keith seems unsurprised when the mayor asks for the DVD back, he like has a sort of knowing expression. So whatever's going on, I think he is aware of whatever it is. But I don't know that he's necessarily like put all the pieces together. Um, but yeah. And oh, and I, I should say that there's this, uh, the dude who had that like seafood truck goes to talk to Lamb and is talking about what he saw. And like, he wasn't willing to testify, so to speak, against the PCHers out of a very understandable concern for his family. Um, and he is talking about the fact that, uh, you know, this dude, what's his face? Um, Fe not Felix. Thumper's bike had a uh, spider on the side, you know, so if Luis um, or no, his name is Luis, if Weevil waited long enough, this witness coming forward, we would have been able to handle Thumper through regular avenues and they do not, he does not wait long enough. So the thing is, though, and this is the thing, right? Like, would it have been enough? I don't know. Um, probably because Thumper, first of all, isn't white. Second of all, is a gang member and known to be a gang member. And third of all, the Fitzpatricks would have distanced themselves from him. So anything that was like keeping him out of trouble from before, I bet they would have like pulled back on and let him sort of fucking like float off on his own. But uh, I feel like 
this turn of events is meant to be a, a moment of us being like, you didn't have to do that, Weevil. You didn't have to handle it like this. But I'm not like, I'm not mad at it because I'm like that, you know? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. But it's a pretty intense like moment when they're flashing the uh, the flashlight around and we see his bike and realize that that's where he is, that he's in the fucking, you know, the stadium. Um, yikes. It's rough. Uh, so, OK, yeah, I think that's the end of the episode. I don't feel like there was anything I missed. Is there? But, yeah, that moment of Thumper, like, hearing the building starting to come down and, like, looking up and being like, what is that? Ooh, that's rough. Um, man, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm super, super curious what happens next episode. And next episode is the one that is a voyeur. So um, anybody who wants to hang out with me for that, let me double check on what the actual uh, day is. But I will be watching that one on camera live. Is that tomorrow morning? Oh, thank God it is. 11 a.m. on Wednesday the 9th. Um, so by the time this episode goes up, it'll be too late for those of you who are listening to join me live. But you will be able to go and watch the video from the Facebook page, facebook.com slash unspoiled pod. Um, and I am just dying to know what's going to happen next. So and correct me if I'm wrong. The next one's a voyeur. Is the one after that a voyeur also? I feel like there was an, there was another voyeur booked recently, um, but I don't know if it's the very next one or the one after. But there have, there are a couple coming up, which again, we're reaching the end of the season. So that makes total sense. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. So. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, the next voyeur is 21, I think, says Anya. So, okay. All right. So it'll be a little bit. Um, but thank you guys all so much for hanging out and for helping me with names and reminding me of stuff. I appreciate it. Also, uh, I am very sorry for sharing that photo with you. <laughs> Oh, Francis, what's the deal? Um, it's just so funny, y'all. It really is. God. But I hope that you all enjoyed listening and that you will come and hang out with me while I watch live next time. And until then, toodaloo, motherfuckers. <laughs>